Hey, this is Nasser, and this is about premium ships. Now, some of you, you know all this. But for most, this is all the tips, the tricks, everything I value in trying to get the premium ship that fits my playstyle, fits the goal that I have set for maybe the month, the week, the year. And it's just a good way to play the game in general. You know, you don't want to spend too much time just grinding. That's the worst part of free-to-play games, is the grind, the constant requirement that you play 100, 200, 300 games in a ship in order to move on to the next one when you just want to gouge your eyes out because you're playing in the Colorado, the Furutaka, the Destroyer Line at 6 and 7. All of these are very frustrating aspects of the game. Hopefully they improve them, but these ships are not fun. You just want to get through them. So what is a premium ship? A premium ship is a ship that provides greater credit income, lower repair costs, and the ability to train commanders without the requirement they are associated with the ship. And most of the time they have a unique gameplay that doesn't exist on other ships. For example, we're in the Tirpitz. How convenient! The Tirpitz is a tier 8 German premium battleship. She was released probably two or three months ago when there was no other German potential line or ships that you could benefit from. It was just purely, oh, this is the Turpitz. It's a well-known ship. Let's buy it. Just going off of what I hear. And generally, she is a very unique ship. She is a German battleship. That doesn't exist in the game. She's a battleship with torpedoes. That doesn't exist in the game. So it's a very unique playstyle, very unique ship. It's enjoyable to play. It's a high tier ship. The higher the premium ship, the greater the credit income, but also the greater the cost. A lot of times, you're gonna be spending a ton of money in order to get these high tier premiums. And in this particular game, it's not necessarily required that you have tons of high tier premiums. You can be just as valuable provide so much value to you as a player in a tier 5. For example, the Merminsk is a fantastic, fantastic premium ship. There's probably not a better ship per value than the Merminsk. It's basically an Omaha with greater range, the ability to have a scout plane, and it sits in the Soviet cruiser line, which will eventually be filled out. There's only going to be one Soviet cruiser whenever the two new lines launch, but eventually there'll probably be nine more cruisers. And you can have a lot of fun playing that cruiser, having a lot of success at five, six, and seven, and it's perfectly fine. You're getting two, three hundred thousand credits per game, roughly, and you're playing against players that are Maybe not aces, but they're working their way into learning the game, being better players, and that in particular is the most important aspect of what premium should I get? Should I get a higher tier premium? Should I get a premium for this particular faction? Should I get a premium because of credit income? Because I enjoy the class? You know, all this stuff is obviously very important. You're deciding between your hard-earned money or spending time earning it through contests. And the Turpits, very expensive, very expensive. Clearly, it is a well-known ship. Wargaming knows that. So they're going to get as much money out of us as they can, which is within their right. So for me, the most important, faction. What faction is it available for? I really enjoy Japanese ships all across the board. So there's a lot of value in the Otago, for instance. Or, I believe the Tone is coming up. It's going to be a Tier 7, I think. There's a lot of value in a Japanese premium for me and for all of you. Same with the US. They have all lines available. You can stick any, and I do mean any commander, in these premiums. You don't have to retrain them. You get 100% benefit from the skills you have selected and the XP gain that it gets applied to those commanders. It's a very important aspect of the game that I don't think 
everyone fully understands exists. Whenever you get a premium vessel, they do not require a commander is trained to use it. Now, obviously, the Turpitz is the only German ship that exists, but for something like the Otago, I do not have a Japanese commander that sits in it ever. I only stick my standard Japanese cruiser captain and maybe my destroyer captain. Maybe my carrier captain because I just want a higher carrier captain. Whatever. You can stick it in that ship, get the XP, and you'll have more power so you can better deal with the enemy. And that's a great thing for everyone to do. Don't keep captains in these premiums. Sometimes they'll come with captains. If the commander doesn't come with three skills, throw it away. <laughs> it's a waste. There's no, there's no value in having a captain that has no skills or one. But when you get a captain that has three skills, there's a lot of value there. That's 25 doubloons right there that you don't need to spend. Some premiums I've gotten had a three skill captain. I think, I think the Marblehead, just because of the challenge for the North American. But yeah, oh, otherwise you look at my port and it's completely empty. There's nothing sitting in any of my premium ships, nothing. Only the Tirpitz and one of the Soviet ships. That's it. They don't need to have anything in it. There's no value in there being a captain assigned to that ship. So that's one aspect that I hope everyone understands. Don't have an assigned captain for your premium ships unless it is the only ship available to that faction, like the Tirpitz right now, or the Warspite for the British. Another aspect you do not need to use your battleship captain in a battleship premium. You don't need to use a cruiser captain in a cruiser premium. You could stick whatever the hell you want, whenever the hell you want, and you will benefit just as much, if not more. If I have a carrier captain that isn't skilled up, there's a really high value in sticking a carrier captain or the potential carrier captain in one of these ships, getting it skilled up just a little bit. Maybe you get six skill points in it. Maybe you get ten. You know, that's not a lot when you consider you're going to play these ships for the credit income. Anyway, there's a lot of great aspects to the premium ship. One aspect I don't like, you cannot increase your XP gain like you can in World of Tanks. In World of Tanks, you have the ability to deny yourself the XP gained for the battle Instead, it would be assigned to the crew, and they would level up quicker. That does not exist in this game. There is no mechanic like that. So, the XP sits on the ships unless you use doubloons to convert it to free XP, which gets very, very costly. It's probably a concession for allowing any commander to sit in these ships. In World of Tanks, you basically have to have one of every class for every faction to really benefit to the fullest and it takes a lot longer well it might be I think it takes a lot longer in World of Tanks to level up a crew in ships you just need a single faction ship whenever they add factions and lines you have a hundred percent value with only having a single premium per faction that should probably be your goal as a player to eventually have a premium ship per faction if you really enjoy the game obviously at the very bare minimum I would recommend a premium ship for that credit income I think there's more value in that premium ship than that premium time maybe you get it on sale that sort of thing maybe you get a tier 5 that's really cheap maybe you can't invest the $5 or 15 I don't know Whatever the premium time is, maybe you, you just don't have the ability to invest that. Just get a really solid tier 5 up premium ship that you enjoy and they fit your playstyle. Once you start developing, moving it out, get one for each faction, especially if you really invest a lot of time in it. You're gonna, you're gonna cut down a ton of the time investment and you're gonna enjoy the game more. Definitely more. That's probably the m one thing I hate about free-to-play games is the 
insane time requirement. These are supposed to cut it down, it's supposed to be more enjoyable, you're supposed to have credits that you can use to buy stuff. That's all real fun. So, we've gone through premium, stuff I do, you know, don't assign a commander, take a commander from a standard ship, use it in, don't need it to be assigned to that ship. I try and have one per faction for the most value, and play the ship class that you really enjoy. You know, find that ship, earn that credit, and you'll have more fun in the game overall. And hopefully, talking about premium ships, talking about ways to min-max your premium ship for your leveling process will sink in. You'll have more fun, you'll have more success, and you'll have a better understanding of how the game works. I hope you enjoyed seeing that little ending. Yes, that was a mutual destruction to how it ended. I hope you maybe learned something. Maybe you knew all of this. Either way, there's valuable information for all. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll catch you next time.